Oh, look at them. They're so cute. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Death by Pony. Today, we're hopping back in the Lake of Voices. Without further ado, let's hop in. A small miracle, the bridge is able to uh, even back out. I release a breath I had been holding. Before the monsters can make more a move on us, we push ahead. Finally, on the board, they start to widen out again. Margaret relaxes her shoulders as they stop needing to brush against mine. My heart pounds from adrenaline that fought against uh, the need to move slowly and carefully despite the insane danger. The chorus of whispers increase as we get out of easy reach. The view of the shoreline draws steadily closer as we go down the path ahead. As it does, the light of the sun starts to barely peek over through the heavy fog. Margaret says something. It's too quiet for me to hear what it was, and I don't have the breath to ask her to elaborate. I'm running incredibly low on energy at the, by this point, and I can tell from the way that Margaret is panting, she too is very tired. And then dull thud vibrates through the boards. Margaret! I slide to a stop, slick bridge, turn to face behind me. Margaret is on the ground. I don't waste even a moment before going to Are her Are you alright? Can you stand? We have to move. No, I can't keep running anymore, Kika. It's too much. There's nothing out there. There's never been anything out there. You can go by yourself. Margaret, my heart sinks at her words. Suddenly, our urgent situation seems much less important. I crouch down to be at her level. She bites back tears and tries to push me away. I know you understand better than most that you can't force someone to do something. I can't do that here. But I can ask if you truly want this. I rest my hand firmly on her shoulder. Margaret, you can make it. We can make it. Even if we don't know what's at the end of this path, we can see it with our own eyes. My voice starts to shake and I barely get out one last sentence. I don't want to go if you're not there with me. It takes some deep breaths, trying to calm the panic inside her. She looks at me fierce and nods. She's going to come. The tears of my own start to fall. I offer my hand. Margaret takes it without hes uh. hesitation. We start to run again. This time we do not stop. We cannot stop. They're ever so slowly moving sunrise and our final chance to make it through this nightmare. My fists are curled tightly as we run, our lungs burning from the sharp, humid air. We keep pushing and pushing with nothing but stubborn refusal to accept this as the end carrying our feet. Until eventually we make it. We practically burst onto shore, rushing onto the solid ground and nearly collapsing. We both manage to distance ourselves from the water line a decent amount before we earnestly crumple to the ground and try to steady our erratic breathing. Tears form in my eyes, flooding onto my cheeks. We made it. Against all odds, we finally made it to the other side of the in one piece. I look towards Margaret fondly. It fills me with joy and we both are here, just as I believed we could be. She is smiling. After a moment of rest, I force myself off the ground weakly and stand on quivering legs. I face Margaret again. This time, she locks eyes with me. Margaret pushes herself up and scrambles towards me. She moves in such a hurry on such unstable legs that she manages to get tangled in the hem of her skirt and tumbles. We're close enough that I'm able to catch her before she hits the ground. I support her as she straightens her skirt out. I'm deeply grateful that I'm able to be there for her. She smirks at me. I have to assume she's thinking about how my behavior makes me truly a typical guard. <gasps> oh, look at them. They're so cute. But suddenly we're embracing. A giddy laugh bubbles up from her and she... Br bruises her face in the crook of my neck. She hugs me tightly. I can keep a blissful smile off my face and the new waterfalls of tears spill down. Margaret lifts her head from her, from my shoulder and gazes into my eyes. Neither of us lets go as we stay in place, a drink in sight of each other, our foreheads brushing lightly as we relish in the joy of being alive together. A noise besides this brings me out of the moment I frantically turn to see where I came from. The disturbance is enough 
to immediately shoot the tension back up. And an immense surprise and thrill when Bamele emerges to view, stands a little ways away almost gawking at what could potentially be a pair of ghosts in front of him. His momentary shock dissipates and as a relief smile easily replaces it. He murmurs quietly, You're alive. My frayed nerves settle again. He made it to the other side. Our reunion is intentionally interrupted by the final member of the group, the guide who seemingly materializes out of nowhere, doesn't have a mind to let us get caught up in emotions on the shore of this lake. It is time to leave this place. There is nothing left for you here. Upon being addressed by him, I rise to my feet. He has a calm look on his face, though there is force behind his sincerity. I open my mouth and attempt to speak. However, I quickly realize I have little idea of what to say. He left us behind, but didn't, did indeed lead to success. Must I admit that forsaking others is correct? Or that not truly, or was that not truly the only way? And then the fog removed from my thoughts after everything that has happened becomes clear. A heart in my face to match his serious disposition. There is something he is certainly right of. This lake isn't a place to linger. Going round and round in circles will never help. We cannot submit our lives to the minds of Sinlos. What I must do if I truly want to defend others is keep them from coming here at all. When I return to my village, I intend to make that information acutely known to our elders. For that to happen, we must leave. Goodbye. His eyes narrow as he looks me over. I begin to feel uncomfortable under his scrutiny, but for a moment I could swear I noticed him smiling slightly. However, it could be uh, easily be a trick of the morning sun. Mele merely scoffs. It's perhaps for the best that Bamele is refusing to acknowledge him rather than deciding to cause aid. At this point, nothing can be done about that man. Margaret steps over to us and regards the guide with a uh, pointed expression. This will be goodbye for us as well. I appreciate the opportunity you've graced me with. However, I won't be returning here. The guide offers no reaction to her statement, in fact. He says nothing at all. Instead, he simply turns on his heels and leaves us alone once more. We make no attempt to stop him, watching him silently as he disappears into the landscape. It's painfully clear that no matter how meaningful this is for us, it's only another day in his life. Once the guide fully departs, Margaret frowns harshly. This all seems so terribly sad. I peer at her empathetically and reach over to her hand. I take it in mind tenderly. She looks down at our joint hands and then at me and manages a bittersweet smile. I regard the lake again. It is isolated and desolate, the mist still covering the surface like a suffocating rag. Kika? Kika? Margaret's worried voice beckons me back to the present. I turn my wistful face to determine as I realize there is still much to accomplish ahead of me. We can't stay here any longer. Good idea, Kika. Keep moving. Because this lake, as he said, not a place to linger. Margaret considers the words with concern. Despite her hesitation, she brings herself to ask to a tentative question. Would it be alright for me to come along? Of course. The village I'm going to isn't exactly safe. However, you are more than welcome to join me, and I will make certain that you are protected there. Margaret's lips turned into an up to into a warm smile as she nods graciously. Thank you. I need some place to go so I can procure a new pair of glasses and a new way to make a living. Besides, you're forcing yourself to act like nothing affects you, and that simply won't do. I blink a few times, unsure how to respond to that. I resign myself to looking away with an awkward smile on my face. Margaret hums a teasing tune as she cracks a grin. Her eyes drift close for a moment as she grows reflective. You know... It's very strange. I felt trapped in my own life. It was as if no matter what I did, I was always running in place, and there was no way to escape the small, miserable bubble I existed in. She sees a glance at me before continuing. That maze of bridges out there was much of the same, but I, well, we, found a way out of that miserable place, and there was something for us at the end after all. I wonder if miracles like that can happen in the real world too. 
It seems I'm not yet out of tears as I feel their presence growing. There is. I'll make sure of it. Margaret regards me with a familiar teasing smile. Are you still holding on to that idea from the island? Is there anything that can shake that determination of yours? I half chuckle at the question. I'm sure there has to be. However, I won't allow something that could break it to occur. Margaret chortles before grinning at me charmingly. I'm glad. That's something I treasure about you, Kika. I can't help being a bit bashful. It is so nice to let myself feel how on I honestly do. Mally clears his throat, capturing my attention. I drag my eyes away from Margaret to him with a sim simper on my face for ignoring his presence all this time. And I snap back to Margaret. I meet her deep inside my eye. It truly her eye. is time for us to leave this place. Margaret's face glows with bravery and new sort of inner strength. Yes, let's go. We turn around and walk away from the lake. Without looking back or stopping, I close my eyes and whisper beneath my breath, soft as falling leaf, to all those left behind within the Lake of Sinlos, offer one last uh, reverent parting word. Farewell. I hurried to him as quickly as I could. I really failed to help another during my journey. I could not afford to fail the villagers. They were grateful to see me, for it was a desperate situation indeed. They urgently meant that my mind was occupied with other matters. I worked tirelessly to aid Hemmers on guards and forcing back the brigaders. But during the moments of calm when the sun went down, I would remember the lake. Mele was a great help during the fight. His outward positivity demeanor lifted the spirits of many around him. But I could see from the shadows in his eyes he hadn't forgotten what we went through. Rather than be paralyzed by it, he is pushing himself to be even stronger. I admire that about him, and fully intend to support him the way he does for me. After putting Sinless behind her, Margaret explained where she was originally from, that she has no plans on returning. Despite leaving everything she knew, Margaret boldly looks towards the future. I respect her for her bravery, and I hope nothing more than the best. I was finally able to learn the name of the stranger we met on the bridge, Lou. As the guide predicted, he did not survive. He had requested to cross and been denied. He must have been truly desperate to attempt the cross alone. I can only pray that those who cared for him will learn the truth of what happened. I have not heard nor seen the guide since then. He will remain obscure in the realm of fog and fear. Mysterious light off in the distance as ever out of reach of the real world. As the task and hammer came to a close, I mentally prepared myself to return home. I am all too aware that things can never be as they were. What I know for certain is that my village elder must be told that no one is to cross Sinlos again. I have already told the hammer leaders the same. Not a single more person should have to experience what we did. Its darkness will remain with me forever for the rest of my days. Though so much was lost, I believe that our lessons we keep others from suffering the same way and in the end, something will be gained. Margaret returned to my village after the task at Hemmer was over. I insisted that she stay with me for a time while she grew accustomed to her new surroundings. While she still liked to tease all the villagers were the same, she was grateful for the offer. We are working together to find a new career that is better suited to her talents than the one she was pursuing before, and it does not seem hopeless. She has already managed to acquaint herself with the village elder. I believe it won't be long before she finds a place she can fully shine. It is incredible to still find fulfillment in these small joys despite the pain and hardship. I will continue to do all I can to protect others and well as life I've come to love. Think of voices. That was a good one, guys. And we still have the third fourth, fifth, and sixth, but the third playthrough will probably be a little bit of a longer one like this. Fourth one, super short. Gonna be added onto something. Probably the fifth, because the fifth doesn't look super long either. The sixth will probably have to be its own playthrough, though. But hey, Look at that. We're three playthroughs through. 
got a couple left and we're getting pretty close here. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and if you did, hit like, that way I know you're enjoying the content I'm making, hit subscribe, that way YouTube brings you back here, this happens next, I won't take up any more of your time, have a good day and I'll see y'all next time, bye!